Okay, lesson 4.2.2, special right triangles and calculating trigonometric functions. Ironically enough, I was having a conversation with Mrs. Rogers this morning, and I want to say she said she was teaching special right triangles right now. So, all that to say, you probably learned this two years ago in geometry. Whether you remember them is a whole other story. So, there are two special right triangles that as you go through math, geometry, trig, you need to be familiar with them. And those two special right triangles we're going to talk about are the 45, 45, 90 and the 30, 60, 90. And they have certain characteristics about them. Let's start with the 45, 45, 90. Based off of this being a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So where we have a 90 degree angle and then two equal 45 degree angles. What do we know about the sides of this triangle? They're going to be equal. Which sides are going to be equal? The opposite of MG. The MG. The non one. Okay, the non slanted one, the non hypotenuse? The length. The legs, yes. Okay, so one key thing is that the legs are going to be equal. And so in reference to the legs, I'm going to call the legs each one. We're kind of working kind of away with ratios. But they're a one-to-one -one ratio, as in the legs are equal. So that is one key point. Is that the legs are equal. And if you think about it, they are, e they are opposite equal angles, right? So if the 45 degree angles are equal, then the sides opposite the 45 degree angles are equal. Now, anyone remember the relationship for the hypotenuse? It has a square root involved. I don't know if that gives you anything or not. You got a guess? Is it like one of the legs times like the square root of three? Almost. Square root of two. Okay. So the hypotenuse, the slanted side, is one of the legs times the square root of two. So in our reference example here, if each leg is one, then the hypotenuse is one times the square root of two, or in other words, just square root of two. So the other little piece of information I'm going to write here is that my hypotenuse is equal to square root of 2 times a leg. In other words, square root of 2 times the length of a leg. Hey, guys, that is essential information. Okay, it is really hard to get through trig and all that without knowing the 45, 45, 90. Okay? Now let's talk about 30, 60, 90. Okay. 30, 60, 90 has its own set of relationships based on the fact that you have one right angle, a 30 degree angle, and a 60 degree angle. I don't know if you guys necessarily remember any of these or not. I call this... I say that we have a short leg, a long leg, and a hypotenuse. Okay, where's the short leg going to be? Okay, so officially it's adjacent to the 60. More officially, the short leg is opposite the smallest angle. So your short leg is opposite the 30 degree angle. And the short leg we usually use as a just basic measurement of one. It's kind of our base of this problem. If we know the short leg, then the hypotenuse has a specific relationship to that short leg. And the hypotenuse is twice the length of the short leg. So, so if I use my measurement of one for the short leg, then the hypotenuse is two times that. Okay. 
So I am going to say here, hypotenuse is equal to 2 times the short leg. And then we have the long leg. The long leg is also in relation to the short leg. And the long leg, throw out your number again, Jacob. Yeah. The long leg is the short leg times the square root of 3. So if my short leg is 1, then my long leg is 1 times square root of 3. So long leg is equal to square root of 3 times the short leg. Okay, so again, realizing the short leg is opposite the 30 degree angle, the long leg is opposite the 60 degree angle. Always there. Okay, does that sound a little familiar to you? Not saying you haven't memorized from geometry, but it sounds a little familiar, I hope, right? Okay, we're going to fill in this chart here. And as we fill in this chart, I would encourage you to memorize it. Just know what goes in each box. But we can use these triangles here to fill in the chart. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, with that in mind, first of all, in this chart, we're going to talk about three key trig angles. 30 degree angle, the 45 degree angle, and the 60 degree angle. All of which happen to be in these special right triangles, yes? Now, the first thing we're going to talk about, ignore the triangles for a moment, what are they equivalent to in radians? So, 30 degree angle, what is that equivalent to in radians? Do you remember how to find out? the equivalents? We learned something last week in lesson 4.1, I believe it was. You would have listened to this via video. How do you change degrees to radians? Multiply by Pi over 180. When you do 30 degrees times pi over 180, think 30 over 1 times pi over 180. What's that going to reduce to? Pi over 6. The more we get familiar with this, that's one you're just going to know. You're just going to know, oh, 30 degrees, pi over 6. That's a connection I want you to get to the point that you make. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and convert the others. 45 degrees. As radians, again, you would multiply by pi over 180. What does... 45 times pi over 180 work out to be? In other words, how many 45s and 180? Four. four. So this is pi over 4. Last one, 60 degrees. Again, multiply by pi over 180. In an effort to change it to radians, how many 60s in 180? Three, so this is pi over three. Okay. You can always convert those. My recommendation, though, is memorize. Just work on memorizing them flat out. Now, the rest of this chart, we're going to look at how to fill it in. Again, fully encourage memorizing. We have a sine column, a cosine column, column, and a tangent column. 
So in this first box here, I want to know the sine of 30 degrees. Any thoughts on how I'm going to find the sine of 30 degrees? We're going to use our special right triangles. We learned how to find sine last week. Let me, let me restate that. We reviewed how to find sine last week, didn't we? How do we find sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Sokotoa, right? SOH. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if you go right here to your 30 degree angle, okay, so using the relationships in this triangle of the 1, 2, and square root of 3, what is the sine of 30 degrees going to be? What is opposite over hypotenuse? And that's going to be? Are we okay with one half? Because opposite the 30 is the 1, the hypotenuse is 2. Now, I think we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and finish off the 30 degree row. You guys have to help me out more though. So that was sine, which is 1 over 2. What about cosine of 30? What do we do for cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we do adjacent over hypotenuse, we're going to say... Square root of 3 over 2. And then tangent of 30. What is our phrase for tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So when we say opposite over adjacent, we're going to say... 1 over square root of 3. I'm not going to count you off if you put 1 over square root of 3. However, you need to be able to recognize that in rationalized form. There are times that you just need to recognize, and 1 over square root of 3 isn't going to be the one that always pops up. So when I say rationalize, how do we rationalize 1 over square root of 3? We multiply top and bottom by... Square root of 3. So on top, 1 times square root of 3 is square root of 3. On bottom, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Those are equivalent. I will accept either or when you're filling out a chart when you're giving me an answer. However, any book type answers are going to say square root of 3 over 3. And there are times, as I said, you need to be able to recognize both are good to recognize. Okay. So you got your 30 degree row filled out, yes? How about the 45 degree row? Let's work on that one. 45 degree row, we're going to our other triangle, yes? Sine of 45. What that, what's that mean I'm doing? You can pick either 45 degree angle. Opposite over hypotenuse, so one over square root of two. What's one over square root of two equivalent to? Yeah, if we rationalize that. Multiply, since there's a square root of 2 on bottom, multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. It's square root of 2 over 2. What about cosine of 45? It's the same thing, isn't it? Sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, my opposite and adjacent are the same. So it is 1 over square root of 2, or in other words, square root of 2 over 2. Tangent of 45? 
Tangent is going to be opposite or over adjacent, which ends up working out to be 1. Okay. Have you done your 60-degree row? Or are you ahead of me? Some of you are. Some of you are. Sine of 60 degree. So now we're back to the other triangle, and we're doing our so we're doing 60. So 60 is my base angle this time. Okay. Sine of 60. What about sine of 60? It's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So square root of three over two. Cosine of 60. Adjacent over hypotenuse, or in other words, 1 over 2. And what about tangent? Tangent of 60 is going to be opposite over adjacent, so square root of 3 over 1, which I'm just going to write as square root of 3. Okay. As you become more familiar with this chart, you'll recognize some of the similarities, some of the, you know, the, the relationships. Um, this radian column, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. The more we work with it, the more you'll become familiar with it. I know in my brain, I just split flop the 3 and the 6 to help me remember what's what. You'll notice your sine and cosine of 30 and 60 are just flip-flopped with each other. We already talked about sine and cosine of 45 are equivalent. You'll notice tangent of 30 and tangent of 60 are reciprocals of each other. So all good relationships to know. Okay, so two-thirds of your homework is using this chart right here. Okay, for instance, well, I'll come back and do it here in a moment. But they might just ask you a question such as cosine of pi over 6. I don't want to calculate their answer. If it says without using a calculator in homework, you have to follow that rule. Because if I do cosine of pi over 6 on a calculator, it's going to give me a decimal. And I don't want a decimal answer if, I, if they're asking for an exact answer. Okay? Now, before we do any of that, though, let's go down and look at example 1. This says find the cotangent, secant, and cosecant of each of the three angles from above. Basically, what are we saying here? Another chart. And that's what I set this one up as, is I set this one up as another chart. I'm still going to put a degree column. I'm still going to have a radian column. And then I'm going to go in the order of cosecant, secant, cotangent. So if you want to start setting things up with me, I should have set this chart up ahead of time had I been thinking about it, but I didn't. So, so I have a degree column. A radian column. What did I say I was going to do first? Cosecant. Cosecant column. secant column and a cotangent column. You know, had I been thinking it would have been better for me to have this chart on the same page as the previous chart. Oh well, we'll make it. Now here, okay, degrees, radians, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. I'm going to have three rows below that. I'm going to have my 30 degree row, my 45 degree row, and my 60 degree row. Not horrible.
Okay, you ready? What do you know about 30 degrees? What is 30 degrees in radians? Thirty degrees is five or six. How do I know that without doing any work? It says it up above, right? Forty-five degrees is pi over four, and sixty degrees is pi over three. Okay. What's the easiest way to get the cosecant column? What's going to make my life easiest? I mean, we can go to the triangles. But I wasn't going to go to the triangles. I'm going to use my other chart. That makes life easier in my mind. Yeah, what's cosecant the reciprocal of? Sine. Okay, remember cosecant, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Flip those first letters. So the sine of 30 degrees, you guys have it on your paper, right? The sine of 30 was 1 over 2. So what's cosecant of 30? 2 over 1, or in other words, 2. If I go ahead and go down the cosecant column, Sine of 45 was, final form I gave square root of 2 over 2. This is where I would go back to the original form of 1 over square root of 2. What's the reciprocal of 1 over square root of 2? Square root of 2. Um, cosecant of 60. Well, the sine of 60 was square root of 3 over 2. So the reciprocal of square root of 3 over 2 is 2 over square root of 3. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the or here because there's a rationalized version, isn't there? When we rationalize with square root of 3 in the denominator, we're going to multiply by square root of 3. 2 times square root of 3 is 2 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is... Three. Okay. Secant column is the reciprocal of cosine column, yes? So the cosine of 30 degrees was square root of 3 over 2. So what's the secant? Two over square root of three. Or if you rationalize it. 2 over square, 2 square root of 3 over 3. Secant of 45. It's a reciprocal of 1 over square root of 2, so it is just square root of 2. Or notice, sine and cosine of 45 are the same, so secant and cosecant of 45 should be the same. Let's see, secant of 60. Cosine of 60 is 1 half, so secant of 60 is... 2 over 1, 2. Cotangent. Cotangent of 30 was, we had it as square root of 3 over 3, but it was originally 1 over square root of 3, right? So when you flip 1 over square root of 3, you get square root of 3. Cotangent of 45. What's the reciprocal of 1? 1. And cotangent of 60. Well, it was square root of 3 over 1 for tangent, right? So now it's going to be 1 over square root of 3, or rationalize that is square root of 3 over 3. Okay. i got to get moving to the bottom part here, but... Know this. Use it. Sometime, I don't know when, we will have a quiz. And your quiz will be fill in both of these charts. I'll give you a paper that is one big chart, and it's going to be fill it in. 
It's going to be a quick, like, five, ten minute quiz, and that will be a quiz in this chapter. Okay? Now, homework tonight. Here's a homework question you might have. And actually, I'm going to go back to my other screen for a moment. I'll come back here. For homework, you might see here. Cosine of pi over 6 without using a calculator. So there's three sections in homework. The first and third section say without using a calculator. And the first section will say something like this, I recall. Cosine of pi over 6. What is cosine of pi over 6 without using a calculator? Square root of 3 over 2. How did he get that so quick? He looked at his chart, yes? This is why you have, what do we say, 26 problems or something of homework? Because you, we did all the hard work right here. We did the chart, okay? Now, the other type of problem you might see, this is probably the first section if I recall. The last section, and I guess I am going to go over here. You might see something such as tangent of theta equals square root of 3. So what are they asking this time? Tangent of what angle equals square root of 3? Tangent of what angle, angle equals square root of 3? 60. Now, they actually want two answers. 60 degrees is our degree answer. And what is that in radians? What is 60 degrees in radians? Pi over 3. Again, did we have to do any hard work? That was looking at the chart. Between these two types, that is two-thirds of your homework. Can you handle it? Okay, so when it says without using a calculator, this is why I'm saying without using a calculator. Cosine of pi over 6 is going to give you a decimal on your calculator. Speaking of calculators, bottom page. Grab your calculators out. Important stuff to talk about. Evaluate each of the following on a calculator. So... Grab your calculator, try, sign of 15, see what you get. You have a sign button, yes. Everyone knows where their sign button is? Does your answer match my answer? No? It doesn't? Okay, so there's a little uh, warning over here, yes? Be sure you're in the correct mode. Now, all of you guys have the fancy calculators in this class? There's an advantage to that. Notice what my calculator says right up here. Does your calculator say degree? Mine is in radian. Ah, see, if your calculator says degree, you got the same answer as me, didn't you? If your calculator is not in degree, what do you need to do? You need to change the mode. Next to your second button, top row, or second row, you see the mode button? Become friends with it. You're going to be using it a lot. So now we're going to go into mode. Um, mine is the fourth row down. I, has a, I have a choice of radians or degrees. So hit enter. And make sure you're on degrees so that degrees is highlighted. I always do a second quit to get out of there. Maybe you can do a clear. I don't know. Now try sine of 15 degrees again. Let's see. I have my answers to three decimal places. So what is that to three decimal places? Approximately 0 0.259. Okay, you're catching on to the big trick of using the calculator, right? Your middle section of homework says use a calculator. 
Yes, you want a decimal answer, but you have to watch your modes. Oh, so careful. Okay. And by the way, how did I know I need to be in degree mode for that? Because it said 15 degrees. Okay, B. What are we doing this time? Cosine of 5 pi over 7. You don't have to necessarily use a fraction bar. You can just do cosine of 5 pi over 7 like that. Does your answer match my answer? I didn't really say it, but what did I have to do in there? Why did I switch to radians? 5 pi over 7. Does that say 5 pi over 7 degrees? Uh-uh. It just says 5 pi over 7. So if, in, if it's degree mode, there's a degree bubble telling me it's degrees. If it's not degrees, there's no little degree bubble telling you degrees, then guess what you have to be in? We have to be in... Radian mode. Oops. So three decimal places with this one. Negative 0 0.623. Did we get it? Are you playing with your calculator and learning how to switch back and forth with modes? Where am I at on time? Okay. I've got two issues, and I've got to cover them in like a matter of like three minutes. First of all, C. It says tangent, yes. Do we have a way to enter degrees, min, or seconds? No, we do not. So, first of all, you are seeing degrees, so what mode are we going to need to end up in? We are going to need to end up in degree mode, but in order to do this one, back in lesson C, 4.1, we, learn we learned how to go from DMS to degrees, yes? You need to do that. And so the idea here is you're going to do 57 degrees. Do you remember doing 13 over 60? And then 15 over 3,600? You need to do that changing there. And then from there, you can do tangent of 57.22083, so on and so forth. And that will give you the answer there. Okay. Now, in all honesty, I'm going to change my mode to degrees. I'm going to clear out there. I'm going to do tangent. You know what I can just do? I can type in 57 plus 13 over 60 plus... 15 over 3,600, and then I don't even have to worry about the decimal. Okay? Otherwise, I would use like a copy and paste thing. What is it? Approximately 1.553. The other option there is if you would have done the 57 plus 1360, you guys know how to go up and like copy and answer? Like you go up and highlight it, you can do that. Now, real quick, guys. Cotangent of negative pi over 10. Ah! First of all, you know you're going to need radian mode, yes? Okay, here's the deal. You need to do the reciprocal, right? Do you have a cotangent button on your calculator? Oh no, we're going to do the reciprocal. And so in order to do the reciprocal, you need to do tangent raised to the negative one power. So like what I can do on here is I can do tangent of negative pi divided by 10. And then what I can do is raise it to the negative one power. Because what's a reciprocal? Flipping it upside down, right? And this is not going to give me the right answer because I'm not in radians. And that should give you the right answer there. So there's one to check. Okay, negative 3.078 is what you would end up with. Check it. Reciprocal. Do not use second tangent. You guys see a tangent to negative 1 above your tangent? Do not use that. That is something totally different, and remind me to explain that tomorrow, okay?
almost got everything in there. We'll talk more tomorrow, but do the homework. Cardboard two guys.